skipped. Okay, so the, the, this is basically the first two slides speak to um, process about who does the classification. And these are th th this is two flow charts, and, and they're really quite similar. I, I just did it for um, the sake of having a, a visual that might make it easier. So in the first in the first um, option, it would be the HRO who f who classifies the complaint. So there's going to be a, a tier A as I, as I envision it. There would be a tier A, which would be the serious complaints, and then tier B would be the less serious complaints. And I'm going to offer you some language in a minute that I think captures it and ask for some guidance from you there as well. So if the HRO reviews the complaints and classifies them, then according to the ordinance, they would then be forwarded um, for the internal um, police process in seven days or less. So for a tier A complaint, which is the, the currently everything follows this process, um, the, the CPRB process would begin, which is that a, a the, um, the complaint is referred to the police for investigation. And then the investigation takes place. And is there any necessary actions are taken? There is a um, disposition by the chief of police that's communicated to the complainant and then that person has the option to appeal to the CPRB. The, the tier B complaints, if we create this, this um, tiering um, um, structure, then an internal review process would take place immediately as well um, and there would be an investigation, any necessary actions would be taken. What I would suggest is that metrics get collected and then reported biannually so that the complaints don't, people would see them in the aggregate and, and information would be collected. And if there were patterns of behavior by a particular officer and so forth, that could be teased out of it, but it wouldn't be that the, you know, all the complaints themselves would go there. The alternative then is that the CPRB reviews the complaint and classifies it as a tier A or tier B. Now, the, the issue here is that CPRB is currently meeting once a month. They're, they're, they're trying. I mean, we've only been at it for um, a few months since that was put in place. Um, and I, what I, so it, it's, you know, plus or minus 30 days to really get it started because you, depending on when the complaint comes in relative to when the next CPRB meeting is, um, that would be, you know, that, that just affects the timing of when things can get started because you have to wait for the CPRB to, to put eyes on it and then make a pronouncement. So that's the only difference is the, is the, is the amount of time, but the other the other um, point of this is that it's also adding to the workload of CPRB if they do the classification process. I know there there was I, I saw at least one um, one person had written in and suggested that CPRB needs to be the the entity that does that. I'm asking for direction from you all, given workload and timing. What's what's your preference, and then um, we'll draft the ordinance accordingly. So that's that's the first thing, and then maybe I'll just skip to the last thing, which is um, this is what I'm proposing as tier A categories of misconduct. Um, these are things that are of a more serious nature, uh, and this this is drawn from the two um, the two examples that I gave you, um, Chicago and Washington D.C. And um, I'm happy to, you know, to I, I, what I'd like to hear is any other um, any other um, behaviors that you think belong in a tier A category, in, so that of the more serious um, nature. So that's what I'm looking for: direction on process and direction on um, defining tier A. Okay. 